Hello and welcome to this new video in which we're going to look at the second part of creating a valid Sudoku puzzle. So in the first video we looked at an algorithm that will start with a blank grid and take you through to a valid solution. So that's a 9 by 9 grid with 1 to 9 appearing once in each row, each column and each of these nine boxes of the grid. Now, we had several people tell us that it would be useful to um, be told how to move from that position, the solved grid, to an actual start puzzle. So in this video, we're going to try and answer that question as clearly as we can. Now, there's various different ways that you could use, of course, to create a Sudoku puzzle. You could, for instance, just pick 24, 25, 26 numbers at random um, from the grid and try and solve it. Um, that's one way to do it, but we're going to do something a bit more systematic here. And we're also going to make a puzzle that has symmetry because most Sudoku puzzles that you see in print are symmetric. Um, and by that, we simply mean that in most cases, um, if this square is given in the grid, then this square is given in the grid. Likewise, if this square is blank and needs to be filled in, then this square is blank and needs to be filled in. So the first step is to define our symmetric pairs. So we will have 41 pairs of um, symmetric givens for this 9 by 9 grid. And we can simply break them up in pairs in your code. So if square 1 is, then square 81 is. That's one pair, 1 and 81. Then 2 and 80. 3 and 79 and so on. So you simply break through into the pairs and of course you have this single digit on its own in the middle um, which is its own symmetric partner. So that gives you the 41 symmetric pairs. And now you just in a random order take out each of those pairs from the grid and then apply the solve rules um, that you are choosing to implement in your solver. And you will end up with a puzzle like this. Um, now let's talk through that in a bit more detail. So let's first of all look at the rules that you may choose to use. Well, the two most common Sudoku solving rules are to work out where an individual number can go in a row or column. So we might ask ourselves, where can the two go in this column, for instance? And then the second rule is to work out what can go in an individual square. Um, so here, we would know it couldn't be a 1, a 6, a 3, a 5, a 7, or a 9, for instance. And you may have come across that as called pencil marks before. So the first thing you will need to do before you actually start taking out your symmetric pairs um, is to write um, and implement the solve rules that you wish to use. So uh, for the puzzle that we're going to talk through in this video, we're going to use those two just described. We can see one of these rules if we click full pencil marks here. So this is the rule whereby we ask what number can go in any given square of the grid and place the pencil marks. So for instance, we can see here that from this position in the very start of the grid, it couldn't be 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So that would be a 2. And so you would place the 2 there, or your algorithm would. Um, and then update accordingly. So then if we have a two there, that then becomes a six. That becomes a nine and so on and so forth. So that's the first rule that you should implement, which is simply to say for each square in the grid, work out the numbers that are already placed in its row, column and box and take those out as candidates. If you have just one candidate left, then you know that must be the answer. Now the second rule we're going to look at is simply where can a number go in each region. So for instance in this column 1, where could the number 9 go? Well it can't go here because we have a 9 there. It could go there. It can't go here because there's a 9 in the row. It can't go here or here because there's a 9 in the box. And it can't go here because there's a 9 in the box. So in fact there's only one place it can go. And so our algorithm would go through each number in turn and check where it can be placed in each row, 
column and box. And if there's only one square available, like there is here, then we place it. Now, once you've implemented your two algorithms, then you simply have them run until they either get stuck, as in they can make no further progress, or they've completely solved the puzzle. So if you get to a stage where using those two algorithms, you've placed all 81 digits into the grid from your start position, then you know that you've got a valid set of givens. If, however, that's not the case, and they simply run out of making progress with some squares unresolved, then you know you don't have a valid puzzle. And in that instance, it means that it's not um, going to be a valid puzzle if you remove that pair of symmetric givens. So you must leave them in the grid. OK, great. So by now, you've defined your 41 symmetric pairs. Um, and you've written the code for your two solve rules, uh, as we've just outlined, and obviously use the programming language of your choice to do that. So now we're actually going to walk through the entire creation of a puzzle from our filled grid up the top here, which you will have created using the algorithm outlined in part one of this video. And we're going to go through the 41 steps, taking out the pairs in turn in a random order, and show you the process and the finished puzzle. So step one, our algorithm has decided to remove the two green squares here, that's square six and square 76, and has tried to solve it, applying those two algorithms that we just described. And this is our valid start puzzle after doing that. You'll see that it's okay to remove these two. And so this is now a valid Sudoku puzzle. Probably the easiest Sudoku puzzle in history, but still a valid puzzle. So now we will step through, um, taking out each symmetric pair in turn, and see what happens. OK, step two. So you'll see a lot of green at the start because it means it's always valid um, to take out a pair. So this time we've taken out these two squares, 9 and 73. And again, it's valid. So our puzzle would look like this. Again, very, very easy, but valid. And now I'm going to step through a bit more quickly. Step three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so far every pair that we've tried to remove has been valid, as in you can remove it and using those two algorithms, you can reach the solution. Let's take some more steps. Fifteen pairs removed and still everything is fine. And you can see now the list of all the squares that it's okay to remove. And so your start puzzle from this stage is below. So starting to look a bit more like a standard Sudoku puzzle. It's symmetric. Um, there's clearly, of course, more givens um, than you would normally have, but uh, we're making good progress. So step 16, right, so we have some red in the grid. So this is the first pair that will not lead to a solution using the two algorithms we've implemented uh, if you take that pair out. So the squares in question are in red here, that's square 30 and square 52. And you can see that if you take those two out together with all of these, then there are some squares in the grid with question marks here, 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 and here that can't be resolved using those two solve rules. So we now know it's not valid to take those two digits out in our start position and so they must remain in the grid and so we've shown them in red here and what we will of course end up with as i'm sure you'll see when we get to step 41 is every square will either be green meaning that would be a blank square in the final puzzle the final start puzzle or it will be a red square which means it can't be taken out and so that will be uh, a pair of the given digits that would appear in the final puzzle so let's keep going. More green, more red. And now the reds will come quite quickly as we near the end. You can see they're really stepping up. And one pair to go. And they can't be taken out. So now we have our final puzzle. So if you display a 9 by 9 Sudoku grid with these givens, Two one six eight three six two nine one eight seven four six four and so on, in that order, then that's a valid Sudoku puzzle that can be solved by a human using those two most common of solve rules. So that's a Sudoku puzzle with twenty six 
given digits. OK, and that's all that there is to it. So to recap, you create your filled valid solution grid using the algorithm outlined in part one of this video. You then use um, the couple of algorithms that we've described earlier on, the couple of solve rules. Um, you write the code for those, and then you break the puzzle into symmetric pairs, and you take them out in turn at random, apply your solve rules as far as you can. Um, if the solve rules can solve the puzzle, then you know it's safe to take out that pair of givens, um, that symmetric pair, and they're shown green here and would just be blank in your puzzle, whilst if it's not safe to remove them, as in if that does not take you through to a valid solution, then you must leave that pair in place, as indicated by the digits in red here, which represent our final puzzle. Okay, so that is one method that you can use to definitely create a valid symmetric Sudoku puzzle from a filled grid. Hope you found that video useful. If you're unsure of anything or have any comments or questions, then please do post in the comments and we'll do our best to help. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.